ES Audio. Hello, I'm Mark Blunden and this is the Evening Standards Tech and Science Daily. Coming up, the latest on Elon Musk's woes, exploding rockets and failed buyouts. But first, the out-of-this-world Technicolor images beamed back from the James Webb Space Telescope are only the beginning of what's to come. That's according to one of the NASA project's scientists. Webb observation is just a first taste because it's just done with one of Webb's instruments. We'll be able to observe planets with all four, and what that will allow us to do is observe a much larger range of different wavelengths, so different colors of the planet. And that uh, allows us to look for different molecules in their atmospheres. That's astro physicist Dr. Tom Green, who Tech and Science Daily caught up with after NASA unveiled the first full-colour images captured by the largest and most powerful orbital observatory. Webb will allow us to see more carbon-bearing molecules, which, as we know, are important for life and are quite strong in the atmospheres of Earth and our solar system planets. So how long does it take to beam back all that high-res data? The Webb Space Telescope is about four times further away than the Moon is uh, from us. So it's about a million miles, you know, 1.5 million kilometers. It takes the the round-trip time between uh, commanding and getting the data down is about 10 seconds. Staying with space and a little more info about that SpaceX rocket prototype explosion, Elon Musk says the failure was actually not good. As the company investigates the level of damage, the rocket is a tester model of the giant Starship from the SpaceX facility in South Texas. Musk says that the cryogenic fuel is an added challenge, saying the rocket fuel needed to propel the Starship creates a big risk in Earth's oxygenated atmosphere. More on Musk and the Tesla magnate is being pursued to the courts by Twitter to see through his deal to buy the social network after talks went rotten. So what soured the relationship, Musk will say. It was about Twitter's failure to be honest about the number of bots on the platform. Now Sky News reports the social media company asked a Delaware court to order Musk to complete the merger at the agreed $54.20 per Twitter to share. Board Chair Brett Taylor tweeted, of course, that the board has filed a lawsuit in the Delaware Court of Chancery to hold Elon Musk accountable to his contractual obligations. A British company has built an Android phone it's claimed is like no other and could even breathe new life into the smartphone market. Evening Standard Business reporter Simon Hunt was at the launch. For big product launches, we're used to seeing an American man standing on a big stage in California addressing an American audience. But this launch felt very different. It was a very diverse group of people introducing the device, and there seems to be a big push to target other smartphone markets like India. Nothing One has a translucent back panel, revealing LED lights when the user has a notification. The CEO told me India has a lot of what he calls tech enthusiast users, and that's who they're targeting there. But they're also targeting what he calls fashionable creatives in the UK. And more than £122 million has been raised so far to back development of the phone, which is due to sell for about £400, which is considerably less than the iPhone. A pilotless Wi-Fi beaming plane that's powered by the sun has just beaten its own record for staying continuously airborne. The BBC reports flight tracking data on the Airbus Zephyr S shows it's now spent 26 days up in the air. Solar Glider flies high in the atmosphere to dodge planes and bad weather and has batteries to keep it aloft at night time, which power two small propellers. Airbus has previously said that Zephyr could spend six months in the sky in the future. A British firm has scooped a health tech award for kidney treatment for patients to use while mobile instead of needing hospital bed. One of the reasons why our device is much smaller and lighter is we just removed all the plumbing and hardware that's normally inside a dialysis machine and put it on this this lightweight disposable cartridge. That's John Millard, boss of Warwickshire-based Quanta Dialysis Technologies, whose invention won a Mac Robert Award from the Royal Academy of Engineering. Their whole lives become dominated by the needs of the therapy. And so typically these patients will go into a hospital three times a week for dialysis sessions that last four hours long generally during the day, generally weekdays, right? So it makes it really difficult for the patients to 
to do the things that we take for granted. The design of the microwave-sized unit was actually inspired by working parts inside orange juice machines, as engineers found the mechanisms needed for dialysis were similar. Let's go to the ads. Stay there for more from the world of tech and science, plus some hurdle players are fuming over Spotify's takeover. Why not hit rate and follow in the meantime? Welcome back. The sportswear company Gymshark has teamed up with a charity that trains barbers to chat to customers about their mental health. We spoke to Noel Mack, who is Gymshark's chief brand officer, about the pop-up. The reception has been absolutely amazing. The amount of young men who've reached out to us on you know, social media and you know, a plethora of other platforms to say that what an amazing this initiative is. The pop-up in Shoreditch is being run with help from the Lions Barber Collective after research showed men were less likely to discuss their mental health. What's the blocker in the UK? Why are... Why are men averse to speaking to a therapist or a mental health professional here? As well as in-person chats at the non-judgmental safe space, the Deload Barber Project, as it's called, also offers links to further help on the Calm smartphone app. I was speaking to True Geordie last night, who's really interested in coming down this week as well. You know, these are some fan favourites at the moment amongst, especially the younger audiences on YouTube and Instagram and TikTok and whatnot. And finally... Spotify has purchased the interactive music guessing game Hurdle and says that the user experience will not change. Players will still be challenged to identify a burst of a mystery song in a game inspired by the five-letter word brain teaser Wordle. But some fans are most unhappy indeed. They're reporting that their game stats have been wiped in the process of the takeover. You're up to date. Come back at 4pm for The Leader, where we bring you the latest news, interviews and analysis from the Evening Standard here in London. And we'll be back tomorrow at 1pm. See you then.